here in Irvine, California. And today I'm going to take you through the design development process for the CX-3. I'm also going to touch a little bit on how we develop all our products and a little bit about the Kodo design philosophy and um, the way we approach design a little bit more, a little bit different than a lot of the other manufacturers do. Um, for the CX-3, the mission was really to create a design that appeals to the progressive customer living a very trend-setting lifestyle. <clears throat> we wanted to create a car that could be used anywhere in any way to support this unique lifestyle. And the packaging for the vehicle makes it a perfect fit for any situation from inner city driving to the great outdoors. Before I talk about the CX-3 though, I want to touch a little bit on the models that have embodied Kodo design over the past few years. Um, this image map uh, runs the mature to dynamic on the x-axis. Vehicles on the y-axis tend to be more spacious in character and vehicles at the bottom of the y-axis tend to be more sporty in character. We began introducing our new generation of products with the CX-5 and we now have a product in every category. When we started designing the CX-3, when we sat down and decide, decided to, to look at the CX-3 in this segment, <clears throat> we wanted to take a completely new approach. We, we essentially didn't want to build a mini version of the CX-5. And conversely, we didn't want to build an SUV version of the Mazda 2. We really wanted to take this in a new direction. We wanted a vehicle that doesn't fit anywhere on this map. <clears throat> to give you some size reference, for example, with our current lineup of CX-5 and Mazda 2 and Mazda 3, the CX, CX-3 is, is much more cab rear proportion. It's also higher than a Mazda 3 and longer than a Mazda 2, obviously much smaller than a CX-5. Um, in comparison to the competitor set, um, we are much more cab rearward. The vehicle is much lower, um, slightly shorter wheelbase, but we are comparable to the June, for example, in the all-important rear header room. So we haven't really sacrificed interior volume for, for style. Um, again, with this vehicle, we really want to combine practicality with everyday use. <clears throat> the other thing we looked at with the vehicle, because it's kind of a, a new segment, is we wanted to look at the H-point location. The H-point location, for those of you, is the seat height of your hip point when you're in the vehicle. And we, we wanted to make sure that we found the perfect H-point for this vehicle. Um, a high H-point has its advantages. It's uh, basically a better view of the road, as you guys all know. It mitigates the feeling of speed, which is good for the passenger. And you guys will find out today when you're on these twisting, turning roads how, how advantageous it is, actually. And also, being higher up doesn't distract the driver from oncoming headlights. Conversely, a lower H point is more for sports cars. It gives you a better feel of the car. You feel more in control, more, more command of the vehicle because you're sitting lower in the vehicle. And it gives you a much more stable eye point. <clears throat> we also take into consideration ingress and egress. Um, you know, again, if it's too high, it's hard to get in and out of the car. And if it's too low, it's hard to get in and out of the car. So what we did is we plotted these three areas and these three specific target zones for us. And we came up with the sweet spot which essentially is, is the ideal balance of the key values of a high H point, a low H point, and entry and exit of the vehicle. So this is the sweet spot we found. So it's, it's I don't want to say it's a high H point, it's not a low H point, it's slightly higher than what's standard, but it's in a great zone for giving you great drivability, good feeling of the vehicle. <clears throat> you know, when we talk about a new presence, and this is obviously a new vehicle, and it's, it's, a, it's a, growing, a new growing segment, um, with this car, we aimed for a presence that defies the category. We didn't just combine elements from different categories, but came up with a vision that went beyond the boundaries of the category to design a car with a new type of presence. With the CX-3, we aimed for a design that, honestly, we wanted a car that's genuinely beautiful, but very well proportioned, while maintaining compactness and everyday practicality. So how did we do that? Well, we looked at, we sat down, we thought, okay, what do, what do we want to create when we develop this car? Obviously, we know what the size of the vehicle is going to be to some degree, but we have to give it this kind of unique character to it. So in order to go beyond the boundaries of the segment, we focused on a theme called expressing beauty, genuine beauty with cutting edge style. And in a way, doing this for us meant going back to the starting point of car design. So to take you to that point, this is what I was mentioning earlier in the presentation, is that I want to talk a little bit about the CX-3, but also to give you guys an idea of how we approach design for all our products. There's three key areas when we develop a product, and proportion, surface, and details. The first key element is proportion. So what are the critical points for beautiful car proportions? 
and how do we achieve that? Well, we all kind of know what good proportions are. We see it in people, generally tall people tend to be well proportioned. But we really wanted to understand what are the critical elements to give a vehicle good, good strong dynamic proportions. Using the Shinari concept car as an example, we like to use this because from a designer standpoint, a concept car is great because we have no real boundaries. We don't have to worry about packaging a specific powertrain or how many people are going to go in it or how comfortable the back seat band. We just really want to design a, a really cool looking car. And this gives us the opportunity to do this using these key elements to give it great proportions. So the first is large wheels and tires. That helps make the vehicle look more compact, more sleek, and more stable. The second is we give it a very small cabin. By reducing the cabin, it gives it more of a sports car or coupe-like proportion. Third is we try to reduce the front and rear overhangs as much as possible. This, from a dynamic standpoint, is an advantage because you have less weight out over the front or rear wheels, but it also makes the car feel more agile and gives it a better stance. And then finally, a long hood or a long dash to axle. We try pushing the A-pillar back, giving the vehicle a long hood, kind of hinting at the fact that it's got a powerful engine under the hood. So we're really, these are the key elements that we try to bring into every design that we can based on the package that we're working with. So to give you an example how we did develop this for the, for the CX-3, we, took, we looked at the same, took the same approach as we did with a concept car, but obviously we're a little bit more limited as far as the package goes. But we thought in the same way. So we looked at, okay, so can we give it big wheels and tires? Well, we did. We gave it the largest wheels and tires in the segment. The vehicle has 18 inch wheels on it, which is unheard of in the segment right now. We also gave it large over fenders to help make the wheels feel even bigger and help reduce the visual mass of the vehicle. We gave it a long sleek cabin, as I mentioned, to give it a much more coupe-like proportion. And also visually, it helps lower the car because the car is fairly tall for its overall length. But by doing this and making the wheels bigger, stretching the cabin out, and, and extending the hood and pushing the A-pillar back, we were able to elongate the car a lot. And as well, we also reduced the front and rear overhangs by positioning most of the key elements, like bumper reinforcements and fog lights, more vertical than normal in, in most production cars. So that was the way we were able to make it much more compact. So we gave it a very compact cabin, very large wheel and tires, very short front and rear overhangs to give the car a very, a very agile and stable feel. The second key element is a key element for Moz, and that's the surfacing or the Kodo design. This vehicle represents a major evolution for us for Kodo philosophy. And with the CX-3, we really wanted to hone the sense of movement expressed by the vehicle. When we talk about honed expression, well, there are a lot of different ways you can approach the sense of movement. With the CX-3, we aim for a faster, sharper, more intelligent expression to really produce a dynamic sense of movement for the vehicle. Um, the best example I can give to, to take it away from a car vernacular is, is that you, you imagine like the, the, the image of a, of a predator or a cheetah or something ready to attack its prey with its muscles all tensed up and it's got this feeling of movement to it or, or for example the stance of a runner before the start of a race. You can see it in his muscles, there's this energy, this force that's ready to be unleashed. That's what we tried to capture in the surfacing of the CX-3. So how did we do that? Well, with Mazda, we're unique in the sense that we, we develop what we call a speed form prior to doing any program. And the speed form for us really allows us to just understand the movement and the surface development we want to capture in the overall expression of the vehicle. Not necessarily the package, but the expression. So this is a great example. And what we do is we take this and look at the movement of the vehicle and, and, or the movement of the form to understand how we can capture the same feeling in, a, in the production production vehicle. So the key thing here is we've got obviously very complex surfaces, but they're all contained by a central axis that runs from the rear of the form to the front. We try to reduce the, the front mass, if you will, over the front of the grill. We try to give it a traction form in the back, so by giving a lot of energy to the rear wheel, again, this gives the vehicle a kind of a forward momentum to it. And you can just see the stance of this object, how much energy it has in it. We also make sure that the surfacing, there's no one common section when you walk around this vehicle. It's got a very undulating surfaces, and that's part of the Kodo design philosophy. All this line diffusion, where you've got very full forms that then get into a tight, a tight line, that's what Kodo's all about, and that's what we're trying to capture when we develop these forms. And this gives us a really, uh, a very free, 
canvas, if you will, to develop the surface treatment. Obviously, when we get it into a production car, we have to tone it down a little bit, but the essence of what we've captured in the surfacing of the vehicle is then represented on the final production car. And you can see here how this movement then translates into the actual vehicle. So for a minute, I'd like to, I'd like to just walk you guys over here and take a quick look at the car. But we were, again, able to reduce the mass of the vehicle by giving it large wheels and tires. The big over fenders, which help reduce the mass over the front fender, and as well in the rear, reduce the mass over the rear fender. Again, this, this constant blacked out cabin, we blacked out the D pillar here to kind of carry your eye all the way around the vehicle so your eye doesn't stop when you're walking around the vehicle. And again, the same approach with the Kodo design philosophy for surfaces. We don't want your eye to stop. When you walk around the vehicle, from the front of the vehicle to the rear, your eye's constantly moving over the surfaces. So we gave it a very strong hood. Again, we push the, to give this strong proportions, we push the A-pillar back past the center line of the front wheels to give it more of a cab rear wheel feel. But we also then took the surfacing in the hood and extended that through the body, again, to elongate the car. So we really want to introduce a lot of horizontal elements as, many, as much as we can, again, to visually make the car look lower. So these are some of the key elements. And, and again, later on today, I'll have some more time. I can go over some more detail with you on this as far as the Kodo and, and kind of highlight some more of the Kodo details. But this kind of summarizes a little bit of what I've talked about with regards to the proportions and to the surface development. Thank <laughs> you.